Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor at Recap, a guy's review. And we have Fantasy Suite. We'll get into this Fantasy Suite. As you guys know, I take notes, read them back to you. No edits, no jump cuts, just me, you guys, and a ton of fun here. Uh, and boy, what a good episode. It ended with a surprise. I mean, we knew someone was going to get their heart broken. We'll get into all of that. Do me a favor. Check out this subscriber race. I'm on the heels of Nick Vial. As you guys know, we're trying to pass everybody in Bachelor Nation due to your loyalty. Only 400 subscribers, probably less than that away. I think we'll get there by Friday. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget, if you're really late to your holiday shopping guide like I am, my fiance, Tasha, has a holiday gift guide. It's free. Type in your email and put your first name, and you can download the gift guide and uh, it's clickable links. You can, uh, you know, pick some fun uh, presents for the home for your significant other or someone else in your family. All right, let's get into it. I'll have a link below in the description. And of course, last but not least, um, I'm doing lunchtime Patreon live streams. The next one's Thursday. That's tomorrow www.patreon.com slash Dave Neal, and you can catch my uh, live streams right there. That's for the private membership only community. All right, so we've got the fantasy suites in Mexico. We finally have made it out of the United States when it comes to the fantasy suites. And don't the fantasy suites hit a little bit better out of the country? It's like when you meet someone on fake on vacation, right? Your moral fiber is pilled. Uh, you don't have the same structural integrities to your moral compass, if you will. Nate, Brandon, and Joe, three great guys. Caitlin and Michelle stroll down the beach discussing Michelle's final options. I don't know. It seems to me like Caitlin's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. She's getting more of the emotional conversations with the lead. I don't know. It could just be uh, the way they're assigning the roles to everybody, but it seems like Caitlin's got more like um, uh, big mother energy happening here. The three guys are all waiting quietly on the couch, which is kind of fun. They just have this couch they have to wait on for their chance to go on the fantasy suite. And then Joe says, from bros to foes. And I've never agreed more with a statement. From bros to foes. Brandon got the first uh, fantasy suite date. Says it's his first time leaving the country. They go horseback riding, which is a known aphrodisiac. I believe, leave a comment, right? Horseback riding. I mean, geez, it's, it's built into the sport, right? Michelle tells Brandon he's one of a kind. He says in his interview that he is so in love with her. So clearly Brandon's just laying it all on the table. Says he wants to rip his heart out and lay it on the table and say, do what you want with it. It only beats for you. How poetic, right? Um, the difference between romantic and and stalkerish is just relative to how charming you are. Because if this was a stalker saying it, I want to rip my heart out and lay it on the table and say, do what you want with it. It only beats for you. You'd be like, whoa, buddy, uh... I know we're in line at a Subway sandwich shop together, but can I just order my spicy Italian BMT? Meanwhile, <coughs> excuse me, Nate and Joe talk about how they shouldn't overthink things, and inadvertently, they start overthinking things, right? They're like, well, look, we shouldn't read into anything. I mean, sure, Michelle's wearing that strapless uh, dress today, and you know, we sh and then the fantasy, and then the fight, the way the fireworks hit the moonlight, you might have seen a shadow, but we shouldn't overthink anything. Brandon tells Michelle he's in love with her till I take my last break. I will put you for a uh, breath. Maybe, maybe that's a typo. I will put you first. Her response. My heart is beating so fast right now. So, you know, not always a good response, but uh, that's what you get. You know, they don't put uh, all their cards on the table here. And they just say, uh, you know, my heart's beating fast. It's like, is that a good thing? My heart beats fast when I work out. My heart also beats fast when I run from the neighborhood dog. That's not on a leash. What does this mean? They forego their individual rooms. The fantasy suite looks so good. Let me ask you guys this. Is the hot tub and champagne the most important part of the fantasy suite to you? Because look, yeah, by all means, it's nice to have a nice bed and an overlooking balcony. But the true work is done in the hot tub. That's where you mingle. That's where your knees kind of wiggle each other. You got the footsie, the bubbles hit you. I feel like the hot tub and champagne is the most important part of not just a fantasy suite, but of any hotel stay out there. Nate and Joe silently sit on the couch with Brandon's fireworks going off in the background. This is where they should have Bose noise-canceling headphone commercials. Wouldn't that be nice if they're just like, and now this part is brought to you by Bose noise-canceling headphones, and they just put the headphones on, and then they don't have to hear, uh, you know, the neighbors banging. Um, I, I'm just full of good ideas, I know. Great uh, synergy right there. All right, um... Uh, Nate and Joe, they sit in there. Okay, we got that. An empanada fight, food fight breaks out in the morning. Might as well ring up the producer's hotel bill. Some producer's like, wait, we had to pay for the cleaning of what? The tapatio? What? <laughs> What's going on over here? Uh, 
Brandon returns. The three guys laugh on the couch in awkward giggles. Oh, you got to love it. Joe's turn. Batter up. They go zip lining. Joe lets Michelle go first, obviously, to make sure the zip line is up to code. He's like, hey, you go first. Okay. Structurally, sound pretty. Okay. Joe coming out of his shell, sharing his emotions. Is it a little bit too late? That's the question. Michelle says, Joe is a thousand piece puzzle, which to me is not a compliment. I hate puzzles. Um, I'd rather you be just a picture book. Uh, tell me what you're thinking. I don't want to have to solve anything. Why do we like to solve the other person? It's like, I, I don't have any corner pieces. The puzzle came with seven missing pieces. That's called childhood. You were abandoned at a mall. <laughs> Nate tells Brandon that he's happy he's going third. Says it's, it says it's with Michelle. It's probably going, she's going with her deepest connection last. And it's funny to watch them fight because Brandon's like, well, I feel like she would go with her best connection first. And then the scrap goes third. You know, they're just kind of bickering back and forth. A lot of people took this as Nate being cocky. Let me know what you guys think. I, th I thought this was just them having playful ribbing. I, I feel like we don't, you know, uh, or we aren't great as an audience at discerning for when they're actually just having fun. You know what I mean? Uh, we don't get the full context. Uh, Joe does the morning after with Michelle. Says he's falling in love with her more every day. Morning after breakfast was on point. Chocolate croissants, fruit bowls. This is how you do a fantasy suite. You need a good fruit bowl. Uh, some shaved coconut on top. Michelle surprised me saying maybe Joe is her soulmate. That was surprising. She goes, maybe Joel's my soulmate. Joe, Joe is my soulmate. Hey, who knows? Nate's turn. He gets the yacht. I mean, come on. He gets the yacht. Hard to compete if you're the one. If you're one of the other guys, it's like the only way this goes bad is Michelle gets seasickness. But uh, clearly, they uh, keep their sea legs underneath them. Michelle is hoping that Nate tells her what she wants to hear. Michelle knows how to ask the hard questions. Although you almost wish Nate told her before she asked. It's one of those things. It's like, you know, imagine if someone's like, "Do you want to get married?" It's like, yeah, well, but I was about to propose. You need to let me propose, or else it looks like it's a uh, you know done at gunpoint. She says after overnight, she may be in love with Nate. No pressure, bud. No pressure at all. She's like, well, depending on how the overnights go, we may be in love. But it's contingent on one thing. Him hitting all the right spots in my soul. Uh, Nate and Michelle get a morning after mariachi, which would be amazing depending on my hangover level. Imagine if it's New Year's morning. You had 15 different champagne bubbly drinks. And then it's like, la da 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 And you're like, no, please stop. Give me Jack Johnson. I need one acoustic guitar. Rose ceremony, here we come. End of the rose ceremonies. They're so dramatic when it's the final three guys. You know, when it's 20 or so, everyone's looking around. Three guys, it's like, all right, if it ain't you, it's me. Brandon cuts Michelle off in her pre-rose speech, asked to chat with her. By the way, there's like 15 minutes left in the show. Whenever they're at the rose ceremony and there's 15 minutes left in the show, that's like when you watch Law & Order and they solve the murder halfway through the show. And you're like, clearly they're not going to solve the murder halfway through the show. More things are going down, and certainly it does. Uh, Nate, Brandon uh, cu Brandon uh, cuts off Michelle's speech, has to talk to her. Sort of a desperate move, but it sucks. You know, he's going into fantasy suite. He was night one, so there's been like three or four nights since his fantasy suite, and he kind of obviously wants um, to get her to remember him before she makes her final pick. Nate gets a rose. And then we have Brandon and Joe. And I mean, I personally think Joe's getting the rose. I think I'm thinking they set up Brandon to be heartbroken the way they kind of edited him. But no, they gave Brandon a good edit. And I mean, there still could possibly be setting him up to be heartbroken, but not yet. Uh, no rose for Joe. Shocker. He looks in complete shock. Joe doesn't look like anything a normal person would look like. He's just like, uh, I, I, I don't know. Like, what the hell happened? I thought this was good. And it's like, well, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Joe has work to do, just like the rest of us do when it comes to expressing our feelings and putting ourselves out there. And hopefully this was a good example where he can learn like, hey, it's good to put yourself out there. Even if you get burned, at least you were in the game. You know, it's a good thing. So let me know what you guys think. I've got a ton of content coming your way. Uh, Colton Underwood's on the Caller Daddy podcast. I'm sure there's going to be a ton of content to pull from that. Um, I've got an interview with um, some special contestants that I'm going to be airing tomorrow. I'm going to be doing that this afternoon and a ton of other stuff. My vlog channel is Christmas videos every single day in December. So if you haven't already, Ready, go to my vlog channel. I'll post a video right here. You can just click right here and then it'll take you right to the vlog channel. You can go get some Christmas cheer all about you. All right, folks, more content coming. Thanks so much for all the support. We'll see you soon.